passengers for flight MP487 to Jezero Crater Mars. Please go to gate number 11 and have your passports ready for boarding. Three, two, one. Okay crew, it's Heidi Von Helmholtz here. We're getting closer to the future and Max will be talking about that in a little bit. Before we talk about that, Max and I want to talk to you a bit about the Mars boarding pass and how you can get one of your own. Over the past years, I've been doing some research on Mars and discovered you could submit your name aboard a Mars rover. I reserve trips for my name to go to Mars three times. Of course, Max loved the idea, but I never let him forget that my name is on one more spacecraft than his is. Let's get in contact with Max and find out how he got his boarding pass, and then he can tell us about the upcoming Mars mission. Max? Hi, Heidi. Looks like you're never going to let me live down the lead you have in the boarding pass department. This mission, Perseverance, is my second trip now. Perseverance will be arriving to Mars this Thursday. This ended up being a benefit because NASA sent me a notification that Perseverance was arriving, hence reminding me to remind the Alien Institute crew that there's going to be new activity on Mars. Now, if you want to make a reservation for future trips to Mars, click on the link below. So let's get to what is going on with our red neighbor, because we are always interested when activity on our favorite planet starts heating up. So as you know, along with Mars orbiters, we have a long list of robots planted on or roving on Mars and we are adding one more to that list on Thursday. In 1976, Viking 1 was the first American robot to successfully land on Mars, and Thursday, Perseverance will be introducing itself to the list. It should be noted that almost all rovers and landers are American, with the exception of the Russian Mars 3 lander and rover. The 1971 Mars 3 lander soft landed and a partial image was transmitted. A minute and 44 seconds after landing, contact was lost and the hope of the rover being operational went dark as Mars 3 became a member of the Mars graveyard of rovers. Back to Perseverance. Now our upcoming mission is not a thousand person colony or even a footprint on Mars, but there is a case to be made for a little excitement. One argument for the excitement is that the drilling of the Martian surface will be a predecessor of a return of materials trip in the near future. The cores that are drilled will be stored on Mars for a future robot to bring home to Earth. Analyzing Martian soil in laboratories here on Earth should increase our knowledge of the red planet by leaps and bounds. Notably, the best thing that could come from this mission, in my opinion, could be that of the, let's call it a chemical plant, producing oxygen on Mars. This idea comes straight from Robert Zubrin's book, The Case for Mars. In general, the book argues that many of the resources needed for a Mars mission should be gotten or developed on Mars itself. He relates a Mars expedition to explorations of the North Pole and the American expedition of Lewis and Clark. He inspires you to think about how hard that expedition would have been if they had to carry all their food, water, and fodder needed for their transcontinental journey. So instead of carrying heavy loads of fuel to Mars, which would be incredibly expensive, a plan was created to develop the fuel needed for the return trip ahead of time on Mars before the astronauts even get there. Zubrin's idea is called Mars Direct, 
And if you haven't read The Case for Mars, make sure you do. Anyway, this Perseverance rover, in many ways, hopefully, lays the groundwork for terraforming and the colonization of Mars, or at least manned missions to Mars. Of course, an informed public will definitely help to increase efforts in true space exploration. Arguably, NASA needs to step up its game. We talk a bit about this in the video, Need Another Space Agency. Okay, what else is on this mission? Well, I haven't come close to covering everything, but other than the drilling and the chemical plant that will produce fuel for the trip back to Earth, there is one more cool thing that this mission supplies, and that is Ingenuity. Ingenuity is a small helicopter with blades rotating 10 times faster than its Earth-bound counterparts. Ingenuity will separate from Perseverance and survey the Martian landscape from above. Basically, it's a Martian helicopter. If it works, it will put another notch in the belt of the numerous successes aerospace engineers have had in the challenging world of space exploration. Now, Perseverance and Ingenuity is not the only team in town this month. On 9 February, the United Arab Emirates Space Agency's spacecraft HOPE entered orbit. The space probe is designed to study daily and seasonal weather cycles, weather events in the lower atmosphere, and how weather varies in different regions of the planet. Also on the list to be studied will be an attempt to learn why the Red Neighbor is losing hydrogen and oxygen into space and other reasons behind its drastic climate changes. Additionally, the Chinese National Space Administration launched a spacecraft to Mars in July of 2020, and it entered orbit around Mars on the 10th of this month. In May, they plan to land a rover, which is coupled to the orbiter, so that it can search for past or present evidence of life. It also paves the way for a future Chinese mission of returning Martian regolith to Earth. So it can be said to a degree that Mars is getting a lot of attention, robotic attention this month. But it is also a long way from the ambitious manned Mars mission NASA promised us in 1981. As the astronaut Gus Grissom once said at a press conference when asked about the risks to human life in the quest for the moon, he said, and I'll have to read this, If we die, we want people to accept it. We are in a risky business, and we hope that if anything happens to us, it will not delay the program. The conquest of space is worth the risk of life. Our God-given curiosity will force us to go there ourselves because in the final analysis, only men can fully evaluate the moon in terms understandable to other men. Now I propose we replace the word moon with Mars. And once we master that planet, we replace Mars with one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. And we keep iterating that idea until we master the galaxy. I know, big dreams. But that's how we thought in the Apollo era. For now, for a short blip of time, a very short blip of time, I'm going to appreciate my boarding pass hold my breath during Thursday's seven-minute descent to the surface of Mars and absorb the precious knowledge gained outside the cradle we call Earth. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video.